you're all well, welcome back to Thursday's edition of the Daily Edit. And this one I've been teasing for a long, long time. Earlier in the month, I think it was in my like new in beauty try on and review, I will link that up there in case you missed that. I said, would you like to see a full face of milk makeup? And I'll throw it all on my face, I'll let you know my thoughts. And of you guys, it was a resounding yes. So that's exactly what you're gonna see today. I was sent, I think, two items from milk. Yeah, the blusher, the lip and cheek, and the Kush mascara. Um, but everything else here I purchased myself. I went a little bit wild on Cult Beauty, which is currently in the UK the only place that you can buy this. It's exclusively online, which means that swatching is a bit of an issue, especially when it comes to the base products, so that's a bit of a pain in the ass. However, the swatches that are available on Cult Beauty are actually pretty good, um, so I was able to work out what shades I was in the concealer, so that is all good. And also, it's just nice to finally be able to get our hands on it here in the UK, because it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm really into this brand. I would definitely recommend having a listen to the Emma Guns podcast, with the founder, she's called Zana Roberts Rassi. Uh, she used to be a beauty editor here in the UK, moved to the US to be with her husband. He is the owner of Milk Studios, which is like, I think like a photography studio, a music studio, like a creative place in New York. And then um, they came up with the idea to launch a makeup brand to go along with that. And I'm into it. This is completely my kind of vibe. It's very Glossier. It's kind of Glossier with Glossier Play added to it, I guess. Uh, first impressions of Glossier Play. I'll link that up there for you. It's got that whole minimal makeup, kind of glossy skin vibe to it, but then it's got things like a bright purple eyeshadow and like tattoo stamp on eyeliners that are in the shape of zodiac signs. So it's got kind of two genres of makeup within it, but I think that's nice. I feel like it does sort of have something for everyone. It has a glossy foundation, it has a matte foundation. You know, they're trying to cater for more makeup taste within their brand, and I think that's really cool. So I've actually been trying this out for about four or five weeks now. There are some things that I really, really love. There are other things which I think are a bit of a pass. Um, but I say, actually, I say overall, I'm like pretty into this brand. So I'm gonna do a little full face for you now, let you know my thoughts as we go, and I'm gonna attempt a purple eye look. Um, after the green eye look that I did, the yellow eye makeup look that I did, uh, the orange makeup eye look that I did, uh, you guys have been requesting like a lilac purple. So I might do halo eye. I've never done that before. We will see how it goes. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But first, let's start with base. I'm going to prep my lips now so that by the time we get to the end and we get to lipstick, they're all nice and nourished. Has a bit of lip balm left over from my skincare routine, but I really like this. It is the Kush Lip Glaze. And um, I've heard not so fab things about the lip balm version of this, but this is the lip glaze kind of mask version. Comes on a little metal tip applicator, which actually feels really soothing on the lips. Just getting rid of the spaniel ears because uh, Milk actually have quite a lot of skincare within their range. Um, and it all comes in these little twist up tubes. That is Milk's thing. Um, when I was listening to the interview with Zana, she was basically saying the idea is just to have makeup that's very easy to apply. You can do it in the back of a cab. You can do it on the tube. You can do it on the train. Do it really, really quickly in the morning. And the whole idea is to not have tools. As far as I know, in the UK anyway, there's no brushes. Yeah, I don't think we have any brushes available. So it's very much supposed to be tool-free. You can just use your hands and these sticks and you just smush it on your face, rub it in and you're done. And they have loads of skincare in these sticks. They have a cleanser, they have an oil, they have like a cooling water, they have serums. They even have masks that you apply to a damp face and you just put that on. Now I have to say, they just don't really appeal to me. I feel like it's because I've got my skincare kind of down. I'm like, yeah, I've kind of got that sorted. I'm not really sure I have the need for something like this. Um, so a lot of the skincare I just skipped on. I sort of read reviews and watched other people's videos and I was like, hmm. I just don't think there's anything that's gonna particularly wow me. If you feel that I need to stand corrected, let me know, drop me a comment down below if there is a product that completely wows you and I need to buy. Holla, I'm interested. But the one thing that I did see that I was like, oh, I feel like I could have a use for that, is the hydrating oil. And it's basically just a twist up stick that is a solid oil. And I really like this under the base. We'll get to the base in a minute. Um, but I actually feel like the base benefits from having this swiped all over your face underneath. I mean, I have to say, it's very easy to apply. 
and then you can just massage it in with your fingers. But I really liked this product and I do feel like for me it works really nicely as a primer almost, like I want to look dewy, I want to look glowy. They do have a primer that at the time of recording this video isn't available in the UK. I've signed up to the wait list, I'm waiting my email eagerly and it's called something like Hydro Grippy Primer. I'm like, yep, yeah, that sounds absolutely incredible. If I have got it by the time this video goes live, I'll pop something up on my Instagram stories. I'll like pin a comment to the top and let you know what I think. Um, but currently the oil is working for me. I like it. Okay, foundations. Now Milk Makeup do two foundation formulas. They do the Sunshine Skin Tint, which is like a glossy tinted moisturizer type product that has more of like a light to medium coverage. It comes in this clicky stick with a rollable at the end. It's just a metal rollable at the end. But they also have the, let me look at my laptop for this, the Blur Liquid Matte Foundation. Now currently in the UK on Cult Beauty, the matte foundation is the only one available. The Sunshine Skin Tint is not available in the UK. I picked this up when I went to Toronto. They had it in Sephora. So if you're based in Canada, the US, you can get either. Uh, but if you're in the UK, there is only the matte one available. I didn't buy the matte one. Number one, I already had this. And number two, I was just like, matte foundation. Me and matte foundations haven't got on for like the last 10 years. So I don't think we're going to start becoming best friends now. If you've given it a go, uh, let me know. I did watch Alex I Covet These video on Milk Makeup. She tried it and really liked it. I'll link that down below for you. But if you have any comments, let me know. I have hit up my contacts at Cult Beauty and asked. I was just like, when is this coming guys? Is it coming? I feel like people really would love to try this foundation. And I was met with a very coy response that apparently the buying team are being pretty chill about it. They won't say either way if it is coming or not. My thoughts, and because I have done some Googling on this product, my thoughts are that maybe they're repackaging it. Um, when you do a Google of this product, it comes up with like milk makeup, sunshine, skin tint, not working. And um, I think for a lot of people, the clicking. I mean, I had to click for a solid like five minutes before product came out and I wonder if they're repackaging it because of that and then maybe we'll get it in the UK or maybe they're saving it as a summer launch in the UK. It's definitely more of a summer product. Um, if I hear anything on that, I will keep you updated. I will let you know. I know it's such a tease to show you a product that you can't currently get in the UK, but I have hope that it will come to the UK eventually. And that would be a good thing because it is a very nice product. Um, I just take two, three pumps. The product comes up around the side and then I just place it on my face where I want it. And it's very much a tinted moisturizer. I, I want to say it's more of a medium coverage actually. You can sort of build it up, which I quite like. Sometimes I apply it with my fingers. Sometimes I like to sort of blend it over with a brush. Um, this is a Zoeva 125 stippling brush or I use my 104 buffer brush as well. I really like this product. I said it in the video that I did with Alana, but to me, it's like what I want the Glossier skin tint to be. It's light on the skin, it's dewy on the skin, it has a nice glow about it, but it does actually have a bit of coverage. You can kind of see that it's evened everything out there. Annoyingly, I really like this product and I really hope it comes to the UK soon. Uh, just for reference, I have the shade Light and I'd say it's the perfect in the middle shade for me, kind of works on a bit more tanned, which um, I am right now, shocking, I know, um, but also works really well if I haven't been tanning and I'm having a bit more of a pale day. A product that I'm a little bit on the fence about is the Flex Concealer. Um, if you've heard about Milk, you've probably heard of this concealer. It's sort of one of their best-selling products. Um, I found the shade range to sort of be 50 shades of beige with it. I don't feel like it's the best shade range I've ever seen and I found kind of working out my shade a bit confusing. They've recently added more shades which is always a good thing um, but I was just like oh I, I don't really know. I couldn't really work it out from the swatches and the photos online so I ended up picking up cream which is more of like a yellow toned concealer and then this one which is fair which is more pink toned. And actually they kind of work. I wouldn't say I'm high maintenance when it comes to concealers. I don't normally tend to do like two different shades, um, but actually it works quite nicely because I can take this one, which is fair, and use this as more of like a face concealer. So I can just pat that where I've got a bit of redness going on on my cheeks, around the side of my nose, on the tip of my nose. And that just works really well for sort of facial evening out in general, but then cream, which is a little bit more yellowy, is more similar to the shade of my Glossier Stretch Concealer, which I absolutely adore, and it's just a bit more brightening, so I can pop that under my eyes and get more of a brightening effect. Um, I like this 
concealer and I've got a beauty blender. Got it. Um, what was I saying? I'm just not, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this concealer. I feel like it's nice. I'm not sure if it's just a little bit too matte for me and I'm just kind of, I'm covered with concealers. I've like got what I need. I'm so obsessed with Glossier Stretch under the eyes. I really love the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Awake Concealer for sort of everywhere else. But I just use this and I'm a bit like, mm, underwhelmed. And I feel like this is probably gonna come out really good on camera just to make me look like I'm completely contradicting <laughs> myself. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm like, it's it's fine. I think if you like more of a liquid concealer in a doe for applicator, you're really gonna like it. I mean, I saw Alani use it the other day. Um, she literally kind of took out the applicator, popped some on her hand and mixed it with a product and used it almost as a tinted moisturizer. So I think it's really cool that you can use it in that kind of way. And annoyingly today, it is looking <laughs> really nice. Um, but yeah, I just haven't been wowed by it. It's it's fine. I'll continue to use it and I will report back if there are any developments in my feelings towards this product. But for me, it's an okay product, but it's not a standout of the range. Here's where the range gets good. Where Milk really have it down for me are their cream pigment cheek products. They all come in twist up formats. They're chunky, you get a shed load of product. They're gonna last you forever, quite frankly. The shade range is good, the blendability is good, the longevity is good. They are just solid, solid products. And if you're gonna pick one thing up from the range, I'm sure it'll come as no surprise to you that I would recommend it being the matte bronzer, which I have in the shade Baked, which is the lighter of the two shades, which I think they have. I've actually had this product for a really long time. I've had this product for well over a year. I picked it up in Sephora when I was in New York or I don't know. I don't know where I was, but I picked it up when I was in America and I've just been using it since then and really, really enjoying it. I put it directly onto my cheeks and I just blend it out with a brush, a stippling brush that I used earlier. Make sure I've got product off. And I just blend it in and I feel like the product is a really gorgeous shade. It's not too orangey, it's not too grey, it doesn't stain the skin, you don't put it on and have like two seconds to blend it out before it sets. It leaves the skin looking just really healthy and lovely and yeah, it's my top, top pick. I just love that product so much. Um, on to the blusher, which is the lip and cheek, and I have the shade Work. Now, because I'm doing a purple eye, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go down the blusher route, so I might apply this later on, but just to chat about it here, I did use this in my playing with pink makeup video that I did recently. I'll link that up there for you. Um, I really, really like this. I don't own many blushes, but I've kept this in my collection and I've used it and I feel like that says something. I actually really like wearing this on the lips as well. Sometimes I find with lip and cheek products they can work better on the cheeks and you put them on the lips and they're powdery or they're actually really sticky, they work really nicely on the lips but they're too kind of tacky for the cheeks. This is somewhere in the middle. It's a perfect formulation. I wish they would come out with like a tawny Glossier Dusk kind of shade. I would be completely all over that, but for now this is a really gorgeous shade. If you've got MAC NC20 and W20 complexion like mine, I feel like that will look amazing on you. The highlighter is one of those like mm, in the middle products for me. Um, it's just the highlighter. I have it in the shade Lit, um, which is the kind of palest shade of them all, but actually is quite pigmented. It's quite golden and champagne-y on my skin. Anyway, maybe one of the holographic highlighters would have been better. I don't know if there's a shade that's more suited to paler skins within that. I feel like I pretty much like all cream highlighters, so it's not that I hate this, it's just that I've got others in my collection that I would prefer to use, and they tend to be more balmy these days than they do tend to be pigmented. So this just isn't currently right up my street. Um, I prefer to apply it to my hands, rub my fingers together, and then apply it like that. I mean, I guess the idea is that you can just apply it directly over your makeup, but I always get a bit worried that it's gonna pull off what I've put underneath, so I prefer to apply it either with a brush or hands, and you've just got a bit more control. For brows, I'm gonna go off-piste and use the Hourglass products that I usually do because I ordered the Milk Makeup, the brow product. I think it's just called Brow Gel. I ordered the darkest shade, and oh 
my word, it was so dark, so pigmented. If you want to see it in action, I used it in my orange eyelid tutorial. I'll link up there in the corner for you. And it, it was it was dark. It kind of contributed to the look in a weird way that I think actually ended up working. But after that, I was like, no, put it in my giveaway pile, passed it on. And I've yet to repurchase the medium shade, which would have been much more suited to me. It was a nice product. Um, but I don't feel like it was anything like wow compared to, I really like the Hourglass Arch Brow Sculpting Gel, Glossier Boy Brow. I feel like there's other ones on the market that come in a wider range of shades and with more sophisticated brushes. So I liked it, but I didn't love it. And that's why I haven't repurchased it. I'm excited about this. I feel like their eye pigments are a real standout product of milks for me. They're a highly, highly pigmented cream eyeshadow that come in these little tubes. And I think there's maybe 10 shades in total. There are some neutral shades in there. There are some not so neutral shades in there. Uh, I treated myself to three. I picked up Gig, which is a like golden bronze. I wore this to the book signing that I did in Brighton back at the end of February. And I was so, so impressed with this shade. It was the first time that I'd used this product. And I was like, okay, you definitely do one eye at a time here. Uh, this pigment sticks down, it dries. It creates like a film on the lid. You can almost feel it drying. Not that it's a horrible feeling, but you can feel it kind of drying and tightening and firming up. You do not need to use a primer with these at all. And you should definitely do one eye at a time because it dries like that and then it doesn't budge and you just can't move it. So today I'm gonna to do this eye and then I'll do this eye. Jam Room, uh, which is like a silvery kind of lavender. And I'm hoping to use this today as like a bit of a inner corner halo eye effect to get a bit of dimension. And then this one is Rave. Oh, I'm so, so, so excited to play with this. So like I said, I've played around with the bronze shade, really love it, really love the formula. Uh, but today I'm gonna give the bold ones a go. Um, but yeah, what I learned was that a little goes a long way, you really don't need a lot, you don't have a lot of time for moving things around and don't even bother with a primer, you don't need it. These things are extremely, extremely long lasting. So look at that, <gasps> oh my word. I haven't got a Casey Jane Hughes reference point, like what am I doing here? Um, I'm just blending that with a flat eyeshadow brush and I'm just gonna pop that all over the lid. <gasps> oh my word, do you see that color? That payoff is insane. They're really gorgeous shades and I feel like this pigment in them makes them look glossy. They're like what I wanted the Glossier Lid Stars to be. Have that sheen, but also have that pigment at the same time. So I'm just gonna apply color, blend, apply color, blend, repeat times 2000. <laughs> it's been about a minute since I applied it and already I can feel it. I'm like, oh yeah, that kind of under layer of color that I've just popped on is not going anywhere. So you really do have to work quickly here. I love that as you blend it out, you get this kind of pink vibe to it. Oh, it's so beautiful, so fun. Okay, now I'm gonna see if I can get my other eye to match and I'm actually taking a fresh squeeze of the purple because I can just feel it drying on my hand and I wanna give this a fair chance. I am in love with this shade. This has been a month of discovery, guys. I'm gonna use a fresh blending brush for this eye so that hopefully I can recreate the blend that I got on the other eye exactly. Oh my word, I love this. I love this so much. I'm so happy that I played with the bronze earlier on because I feel like I would have like popped a little onto each eye and then tried to blend and then got in a lot of trouble. Definitely one eye at one time and also this stuff is so pigmented, you don't need a lot of it. Like take a squeeze for each eye because like look at my hand. Honestly, this stuff, I can just dip my finger into this water that I've got here. Look, my finger is wet. This is not moving. It just, it's really hard to get off. You have to have waterproof eye makeup remover to get it off because it just, I can, I can feel it. it kind of dries. It doesn't crease, which is amazing, but that does affect your blend time. I'm gonna tidy up here, but I'm gonna need to get some eye makeup remover to do that. I've got the cotton buds, but I'm gonna go get that. I forgot that it was so hard to get off. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of the lavender shade in the center of the lids. Or do I want to? I just, I really love it like this. I will take a really, really, really tiny amount. I wanna see how it works. Um, this is more of like a cool toned, 
silvery lilac. I'm going to take it on a different brush, like a flat shaded brush, but I'm really going to try and sheer it out and just get a small amount of product in the centre of my nose. Okay, I need more than that. And then I'm just blending over with the purple brush to sort of blend that in. Hmm, I'm not crazy about that. I feel like I've kind of ruined it and I feel like the pigments sort of don't blend well together. I feel like maybe if you're doing this, just use one shade. Uh, let me try and recover it with the purple over that. So I'm just tidying that up on the edges with a cotton bud, but the lesson here is less is more and stick. Stick with your one shade. I definitely preferred it looking like that and I feel like the more I played around with it, the more like crepey and dry it's got on the eyes, it's much better. Just, just leave it, you know, be happy with happy with where you've got it to. Um, but I do, oh my god, I love that purple. Also really easy to apply for like such a intricate product that appears to be a little finickety and also such a bold colour. And um, I looked back at my thing and it took me six minutes to do that. So that's pretty cool. Let's talk about eyeliners because I have been testing out the long wear gel eyeliner. This is in the shade bonus, I think. So on one side you've got twist up colour and um, bonus is just a shimmery cocoa it's just a deep bronze and um, it's got like golden flecks in it Lily if you're watching this video this is completely your kind of eyeliner shade you will love this and then on one end it says smudger slash sharpener and um, the smudger easy to find that's there the sharpener like is it in here so you have to pull the smudger off. I've Googled it, I've looked on the Milk website, I've looked on the Cult Beauty website, I can't for the life of me work out where the sharpener is. Now it's a twist up product and it's a pretty small nib, so it's not like you need the sharpener necessarily, but sometimes it's nice just to get that nib back really sharp so you can get a real nice end to any liner or flicks that you're doing. So if anyone knows where the secret sharpener is, let me know, I'm very, very interested. I really like this product. It's very different to, say, the Glossier Color Slides where you have got blending time and like the eye pigments, you've got blending time. Uh, with this, you do not have blending time. I applied that approximately 10 seconds ago and yeah, it's smudging a little bit, but nope, there you go, it's gone. Like like literally it just does not budge like even the glitter it's it's really quite something in such a short space of time and um, so I really like this liner for just beefing out the outer corner it's really nice on the waterline it's very long wearing however if you want something that you can smudge and kind of play around with this is not your liner I personally really like it I'm not going to use it today I don't feel like this eye look needs it but it does get a seal of approval and if you just want a brown cocoa shimmery liner you'll like it now for mascara they did send me this and this is kind of like one of their best selling products it is the Kush mascara when I got this I was just like oh my god milk is coming to the UK I'm so so excited I layered it up on my lashes layer 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 it doesn't hold a curl it doesn't produce a curl in my opinion on my very 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 straight kind of downward pointing eyelashes um however it bought volume by the bucket load so I think what I'm going to do and this is how I've been using the new Pat McGrath mascara as well is to use the long com uh, miss your big waterproof mascara kind of set the curl wait for that to dry and then go in with the Kush mascara. I haven't tried that yet with this, um, but I did like the mascara when I just used it that time, just layering it on. I was really impressed by the volume and like sheer length that you could get out of this mascara, but for me, it has to be waterproof and it has to be able to hold a curl. Actually, it doesn't have to be waterproof. It just has to be able to hold a curl. And normally the two, they come together as a package. Um, so I'm gonna pop some mascara on now, but we will come back and we will revisit that mascara in a minute. Okay, my Lancome mascara has dried. Let's go in with this and see if this works. Ooh, yeah, kind of. I think if you have naturally curly eyelashes and really wanted volume out of a mascara, I think you would really like this. It's just me, you know what I'm like with my mascaras, I'm a fussy old what's it. This is definitely adding volume when you look at this one which I've done and this one that I haven't, like it, it is adding oomph, it's adding a lot of black, it's adding a lot of texture to the lashes which is great, um, but I do feel like my Pat McGrath one, guys, guys, I'm gonna have to show you in my March favourites, like it makes my lashes insane. I've been getting so many um, Instagram messages from you guys being like, what are you doing? Have you had LVL? No, I haven't. It's just 
layering up mascaras if you can be bothered like it really really works i was really chuffed about the lipsticks because when milk makeup first came to the uk they hadn't released the lipsticks and then on cop beauty they appeared literally on the day that i was making this order so i was like oh brilliant um i picked up two i picked up name drop which is a fiery red um, it's a really nice shade and it's a nice lipstick formula. It's definitely more moisturising and nourishing on the lips than what I would usually go for with these type of shades. But it is actually quite nice to have a shade that isn't as full on when it comes to a matte texture on the lips. I feel like because this is a little bit creamier, um, I can sort of put it on and sheer it out. I've been wearing it quite a bit, sort of just dabbing it onto my lips, adding the lip balm over the top and then blending it in with a eyeshadow brush, like very Case Jane Hughes, and um, I really love that style. So I like this one, but my top pick would be this one, which is Skills. Uh, this is a peachy nude, what a surprise, and I absolutely love it, and I think it's gonna go really nicely with this look. Just washing it on the back of my lips and then blending it in. I like it. It's a really nice formula. It's a really nice colour if you're into like the MAC Yashes of the world. I feel like you'll really like this. This is almost like the summer version of MAC Yash. Need I say any more? I've just gathered all my milk makeup top picks and uh, there's quite a few here. I wouldn't say this is a very edited selection, but it is a selection of products that I can just see myself using and wearing time and time again and really becoming part of my everyday routine. Um, I really like the hydrating oil. I think it's a really nice primary type product. I'm not sure I'd use it so much in the skincare sense, but I think it is quite nice to have something so hydrated with your everyday makeup, especially if you're quite dry like me, because if you put your skincare on maybe like an hour or two prior to putting your makeup on, it's a nice refresher of hydration. I'm into it, also really cool and fun to travel. The Sunshine Skin Tint, annoyingly not available in the UK. I hope this comes soon. I really like it. The matte bronzer in the shade Baked. It is such a lovely warming shade, a really nice product not patchy, so easy to use. And the same can be said for the lip and cheek in work. Love it on the cheeks, love it on the lips. Um, the cheek products are really the standouts of the milk range to me. Um, the eye pigments, they're really fun. I think after recording this video, I'm gonna pick up more of the bold shades because I think they work so well as like a one wash wonder that you can just apply all over the eyes using just two tools, pair it with a load of mascara and do a really fun, bold eye look that literally takes you five minutes, six minutes I think it took me to do, so very quick and easy. Um, and I do really enjoy Gig, um, although I would say I prefer Rave. I feel like this went on the eye even more pigmented than Gig, um, but maybe last time with Gig I was just a bit scaredy cat. Now I wanna go all the way in, I just absolutely adore this look. The eyeliners are good if you're not interested in getting a defined flick and actually you just want a bit of definition and volume behind your lashes. They work really, really well and they are so, so long lasting. If you have watery eyes, that is a good one for you. But that is it. I feel like I'm hanging up my color experimentation hat for the month. Um, I've had a really good time playing with color this month. So let me know if that is something you would like to see me do more of. I feel like I've done one like nude makeup look and every other time I've done makeup it's been yellow, pink, orange or purple. But I think if I had to pick a favourite it would be this. I mean it goes with the whole colour theory. If you've got green eyes you're supposed to wear purple eyeshadow and I, I don't call it bullshit. I think it actually is true. Um, I really like this look and I will 100% be doing this again. But there are just three videos left of the daily edit. I will pop the link to the playlist in the top line in the description box down below if you need to catch up on any. Tomorrow I've got the final vlog of the month for you and then after that I've got my March favourites and then on Sunday there is a spring capture wardrobe planning video so keep your eyes out for that. Thank you so much for watching as always. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Everything will be linked down below and uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye!